If one will try searching for the following keywords, most famous Rolex watch on Google, one will likely get results for either the Submariner or the Daytona. However, many watch enthusiasts feel that the Daytona would secure the title of most infamous wristwatch in a post-pandemic world when people regularly check different watch Instagram accounts. And speaking Rolex has expanded well beyond professional sportsmen and Wall Street financiers. But how did this wristwatch become more iconic than James Bond's Submariner? To call the Daytona an icon would be an understatement. It has achieved not just the millennial meaning of the quote-and-unquote hype status, but also the prestige of being an acknowledged cultural touchstone. That is exactly what we are going to discover in this video. So make sure to stay and watch the video until the end to find out more about the current acclaim being given to the Rolex Daytona. Welcome to the luxury world. Get inspired with us today and tomorrow. As usual, before proceeding, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on our latest videos. Now to begin with, a writer from Heist Dubai, a well-known watch blog, had a conversation with Jeff Hess, the creator of Rolifast and a Rolex collector of long standing who is kind of a big deal in the Rolex world. He provided a list of characteristics that a watch must have in order to be considered an icon, including the following. To begin, the watch ought to be praised for its outstanding quality, he comments. It must be well recognized and easily identifiable by a critical mass of collectors. As well as, there must be a memorable and easy to comprehend tale which complements the design. And, the watch must be replicated by other brands. Hess claims that no other watch on earth comes close to meeting all of these requirements, as well as the Daytona does. We all know that Rolex is the undisputed king when it comes to the mass production of luxury timepieces, and one reason for this may be that they have a proven track record of reliability. Finding the right balance between being consistent and inventive may be challenging. When it comes to creativity, says Hess, there are two schools of thought. We are not talking about large, gigantic revolutionary improvements. Rather, we are talking about far more gradual and tiny tweaks that will make the product marginally better each time. Small improvements, for the most part, particularly to both the design and the movement, retain the spirit of the watch, and as a result, guarantee that the model is always part of the zeitgeist. The Rolex approach, as we have seen especially with Daytona, is to keep the product appearing substantially the same. First things first, let's take a look around the Daytona Hall of Fame. It all starts with the development of the pre-Daytona watch, then moves onto the Pumper Pusher Daytona, then the Screw Pusher Daytona with an oyster case, which developed into a slightly larger Daytona that housed the Zenit El Primero movement, which eventually led to the Rolex in-house automatic movement and finally culminated in the current ceramic bezel model. The adjustments are still one step at a time, with a few rainbows and eye of the tiger's exceptions here and there. According to Hess, because of this consistency, it becomes predictable for the collector, and it also becomes impervious to the market blunders. Because there are so many new people getting into collecting right now, it's reassuring for them to get a Daytona, and the likelihood of the watch maintaining its value is increased significantly it's a sure thing to win. Collectors are having trouble finding a balance between investing for their passion and expanding their assets as a result of the growing number of new collectors whose primary emphasis is on the possibility of investment and the idea of purchasing responsibly. Hess makes the observations that these watches have evolved into ubiquitous forms of liquid assets. They are unaffected by location. If you buy a Daytona in one area of the world and wish to sell it in another nation, you won't have any trouble doing so. When it comes to a Daytona, the value is going to be consistent all over the place, in contrast to the value of the real estate. Geography is irrelevant since it does not matter where the item was purchased, sold, or worn. It's a form of cash that's acknowledged everywhere. However, the Daytona does not merely have monetary worth. Rather, it's a prestige symbol that is known all over the world. In this regard, it's comparable to other high-end luxury items such as Birkin bags and Porsche GTs. It has grown to be a sign of accomplishment, chicness, and even to some extent, power. Everyone throughout the world is aware of its significance in society. Everybody knows what a Rolex is, 
and practically everybody knows what a Rolex Daytona is. According to Hess, if you saw it at the table next to you in a restaurant, you would know what it was. And that's the part of its potency, he said. In order to comprehend the watch's ascent to power, we need to look at the Daytona's Genesis tale. The history of Rolex and its connection with racing extends back to the 1930s. But it was in 1959 that Rolex's affiliation with the Daytona International Speedway started, and in 1963, the Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph was debuted. A few years later, Rolex put the word Daytona to the dial of the legendary chronograph, developed for racing drivers to symbolize its association with the Speedway. The Daytona has probably become the most important watch in the motor racing industry. Currently, Rolex is the official watch of Formula One and the 24 Hours of Le Mans. It's also a partner of the FIA World Endurance Championship and, of course, the sponsor of the Rolex 24 at Daytona. The Rolex Monterey Sports Reunion, the Quail, and the Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance are the three most important events of Monterey Car Week, aka the most insane car show of all time. Imagine a place where the cars in the parking lot are just a warm-up for what's really going on. I spotted a Bugatti Chiron Pure Sport, a Mercedes 300 SL Gull Wing, and a Pagani Huayra all within 20 seconds of pulling up. And if you were wondering where all the Rolex Daytonas were, one thing is for sure, they are all at Monterey Car Week. The Daytona is the go-to chronograph for if not all, then most car enthusiasts and there's undeniable enthusiasm for both racing and Rolex. The winning driver at the 24 Hours Le Mans is presented with a Daytona every year, and the watch has become a prized possession in its own right. Tom Christensen, a nine-time winner of the Le Mans racing and a star in the automotive industry, told me that his Daytona reflect a lifetime of aspiration. They carry a lot of energy for me. After winning both the 12 Hours of Sebring and the 24 Hours of Le Mans in the same year at 2000, he treated himself to his favorite car. This was long before Rolex became involved. Now, how therefore can we explain the watch's meteoric rise from its roots in motorsports to its current prominence as a cultural hot commodity across the board? Hess acknowledges that pop culture itself, particularly Paul Newman, is partly responsible. Newman's wife, Joanne Woodward, who probably bought it from Tiffany & Co. about 1970, gave it to him at first, and he became an early advocate for the brand. Over the next decade, he was frequently seen sporting his Daytona Reference 6239, which had an exotic dial, a design so far outside of mainstream watch culture that it was considered exotic by Rolex. Collectors began referring to this particular model of Daytona as the Paul Newman, since Newman was spotted wearing it both on and off the track. The fact that Paul Newman's watch ultimately brought $17 million at auction in 2017 had a significant impact not just on the Daytona collecting community, but also on the watch collecting community as a whole. It's quite humorous that a watch that did not sell well at all in the early 1970s a $200 watch that did not sell well and was eventually discontinued has become the Rolex model that is sought after the most. Since there is no public exchange for watches comparable to the stock market, the most conspicuous sales for public consumption takes place at auctions. As a result, people's perceptions of timepieces are undoubtedly shaped by auctions. Hess adds that Rolex watches, and the Daytona in particular, are known for their reliable performance. They yield insane outcomes and garner major headlines, probably more than any other watch, said the reviewer of one of the watches. Without a shadow of a doubt, those headlines cause prices to remain constant and occasionally even rise. In that regard, the Daytona is something of a public celebrity. Hardcore collectors are characterized by their need for rarity, and the higher echelons of Rolex customers have begun collecting the less conventional appearing, wherein some may even say is radical looking. Daytonas manufactured by Rolex in recent years in addition to Paul Newman's. This largely gem set pieces with names like the Rainbow, Leopard, and Eye of the Tiger may appear out of place at first, but Tess points out that they really reflect the current aesthetic and that they sit in their own bucket.
they are not mass-produced like the other standard items, but rather are created in little runs and cater to a niche market. Not many collectors will ever even get to see one, let alone possess one. Malika Crawford of Heist Nabidi wanted to know more about the Daytona craze. So this writer contacted Lay Zagori, vice president of watches at Sotheby's USA. And according to her, notable examples of Zagori's favorites that have recently sold at auction include a lapis stone dial and a turquoise Stella dial, both of which set new prices at their respective sales. This year's important watches sale at Sotheby's New York include a rose gold rainbow Daytona, reference 116595. The winning offer was $630,000, which in light of the $17 million Paul Newman may seem underwhelming. However, let's put that into perspective. That's almost half a million dollars. For a watch. When this one blogger went to the auction house for the preview of the watches, like she does every other year, and decided to give this one a try, despite the fact that she normally avoids anything made of rose gold. Accordingly, there's no denying that it felt great. But still, she can't help but question how much of that was due to the watch's renown. For her, the rainbow had a certain allure to it, and she couldn't help but compare it to the experience of finally meeting a celebrity crush wherein you know they're famous, you know they're insanely beautiful, and you know they're so far out of your league that it's laughable. But that doesn't stop you from trying to socialize a little. Sogori says that the Beach Daytona's current success is due to the demand for watches with brilliant Oyster Perpetual Stella collar dials. It's the right blend, a playful version of a really heavy watch, says designer Mark Echo. People are still drawn towards Daytona more than anything else. A new generation of Rolex fanatics has emerged as a direct result of the information age. Once considered an eccentric piece of watch culture, the Paul Newman Daytona is now readily accessible for purchase by the general public. The Rainbows and Leopards are watches that are rarely handled by ordinary people. Nonetheless, they have established a huge space and a powerful presence within the community of online watch enthusiasts. One may ask, is there a correlation between high levels of spending and decreased prestige? The fact that Rolex continues to mass-produce watches that give off the impression of being extremely unique is one of the company's most interesting qualities. However, the Daytona is a timepiece that exists beyond the culture of hype. It's a watch that works across all age groups and appeals to both genders. Simply said, it's a timeless design, which is exactly what Rolex excels at producing and never fails to do so. And those are so far the opinions and impressions on the iconic Rolex Daytona. Did this information lead you to dreaming about having the Rolex Daytona just like most of us? Well, let us know what you think by leaving a comment below. Also, please share, like, and subscribe to this video. This is Luxury World, and we'll see you next time.